Mr. Kurt Ferguson, thank you very much for joining us here on CCTV. First of all, you announced uh, lately that Coca-Cola will invest $500 million more in Egypt. Where will this money go? Well, generally, we're growing our business very fast in Egypt. Uh, last year, we grew at 8%. This year, we're growing at double digits. We see tremendous scale, 90 million Egyptians. Uh, and we just think it's, you know, that's what we have to do to invest. One of the really neat things we have going on is a grove to glass juice plant where mangoes and oranges come in one end and on the other end is actually finished product. We have two big strong juice brands in the, in the marketplace. One is Cappy and the other one is Ronnie. Uh, so I mean the, the Egyptian market for juice is growing exponentially. We just put three new manufacturing lines in for the Tetra Box. Every year we try to, in Egypt, we try to open up 50 to 60 to 70,000 new outlets. Egypt is not just a branch for Coca-Cola. This is a center where you export to 45 other countries or more in the region and around the world. Why Egypt? Good question. First of all, to set up a big business for export, you need a domestic market. Egypt has 90 million people. So you have a built-in buffer pretty much for the products you have to export. Um, the other one is that uh, the free zone works very, very well. The whole concept of easy in, easy out. If you're a company that's looking at logistics and moving things to, you know, it's hard enough to move things in Africa. Uh, so you need to have that type of ease and facilitation to help with that natural transport leak. And Egypt has great ports. You know, the Suez Canal project, that's just going to enhance the viability of those ports. So we're very, very happy about that. And we can get a great trained labor force that's very worldly, that's multilingual, that knows the region, and, and we can put that labor force to work to, to help us expand our products and, and where we have to go. So, you know, when you're starting businesses in, in the Saudi, the, the GCC, whatever, and across Africa, uh, Egyptians are well-known talent that we're, that we're now putting in a lot of different high-level positions. You are president of Coca-Cola Middle East and North Africa, and this is a region where it has faced a lot of political turmoil in the last five years. How did Coca-Cola deal with these issues? Obviously, it's hard. You know, you don't put in your business plan, we're going to lose Assyria, Yemen, and Libya, where we had big operations. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we, had, we employ Syrian, <laughs> Yemenis, and Libyans. And so we try to figure out the best way possible. <laughs> Out of 33 countries, the, we actually sit there and say, okay, maybe we have to make a bigger bet now in Egypt. Okay, maybe we have to make a bigger bet now in Egypt. We're going to do Since in we Libya. can't make that bet. You've missed when you have 90 million people, uh, because you know that can that can give you that scale. But Egypt also has some really good trade and, and distribution agreements with the rest of Africa. Africa is pretty tough. Uh, and to get around all the different customs duties, uh, you need ECOWASH, you need Kamesa, and all the other things that uh, Egypt was pretty much at the forefront of, of pioneering. You need good transport systems. You need, you need water. You need electricity. And Egypt has all those. And, and they need manpower, trained manpower. And Egypt has all of that. So we're very, very fortunate. And I think it's an excellent hub. Mr. Ferguson, thank you very much for joining us here on CCTV.